Want faster Azure VMs and lower costs? Ephemeral OS disks might be the game changer you're missing. Hey everyone, I'm Travis and this is Reltos. Today, we're diving into ephemeral OS disks for Azure VMs. What they are, why they're fast, and when to use them. And stick around to the end for some gotchas you'll want to know before deploying. Before we jump in, hit like, subscribe, and share this with a friend. It really helps the channel. Check out my courses on udemy.com, including a beginner's guide to the AZ900. Links are below. And a big thanks to my channel members. Your support is appreciated. So what is an ephemeral OS disk? Ephemeral means short-lived. In Azure, it refers to temporary storage that disappears when the VM is deallocated. Let's break it down. A typical Azure VM uses managed disks. These disks are network attached and persistent. They survive reboots, resizing, and deallocation. The performance of a managed disk is based on capacity, and there's a cost for managed disks. Some VMs also get temporary disks, usually the D drive on Windows or the dev disk Azure resource directory in Linux. This disk exists on the same physical host as the VM and is removed when the VM is deallocated. That's why it's called ephemeral. Here's the kicker. It's fast, low latency, high IOPS, and included in the VM price. Ephemeral OS disks take advantage of that speed by putting the operating system on the temporary disk. That means better performance, quicker imaging, and no extra cost for the OS disk. But there's a trade-off. If the VM is deallocated, the OS is gone. It needs to be re-imaged to bring it back online. It can be restarted from inside the OS, but if it's stopped from Azure, the disk is removed. That makes ephemeral OS disks perfect for stateless workloads, think scale sets or disposable VMs like pooled session hosts in AVD. They support all Marketplace and Azure Compute Gallery images and are available in all regions, but not every VM size supports them. The VM has to have a local temp or cache disk and enough space on that disk for the OS image, 127 gigs for most Windows images, 30 gigs for Linux or images labeled as small disk. Let's jump into the portal and deploy a couple VMs with an ephemeral OS disk through the portal and PowerShell. Here we are in the Azure portal at the create a new VM page. This is just like any other VM. We start by selecting our subscription and resource group, give it a name, select the region and the availability options. This example won't use any infrastructure redundancy. We'll leave the security type as trusted launch and select the image. This example will use 2022 data center Azure edition and we won't run it as a spot instance. Next, let's select the VM size. Let's go to CL sizes. Let's make the screen a little bigger. The filter for this example is set to two to eight cores and four to 32 gigs of RAM. Let's take a look at the D series V5. Some of these have local storage and others don't. We can set a filter to just the VMs that support ephemeral disks. That limits the results to just the VMs with local storage. For the V5D series, we have 75, 150, and 300 gig options for the local storage capacity. The larger the VM, the more capacity. Notice the type for the local storage is SCSI. That indicates the interface for the local storage on the physical host. Let's take a look at the V6D series VMs. This provides other local storage options. 110, 220, and 440 gigs of NVMe memory. The V6D series supports the new NVMe local storage. Let's select a VM. We're using a Windows image and not the small disk option, so we need at least 127 gigs of local storage. Let's select the D4ADS V6. We'll select that. We'll finish this page and go next to disks. Under OS disks, we can see the image size and premium SSD is selected. To enable ephemeral OS disks, we need to go to advanced. We only have the option for NVMe placement. This VM version supports NVMe. OS cache is for older VM versions and temp disk is for newer non V6 VMs. Before we move on, I'm going to show a few other combinations. Let's go back and select a Linux image. This shows the image size as 30 gigs. So we could go with a smaller VM SKU if needed. Let's go back and change the VM back to Windows Server 2022. 
and let's go to see all sizes. For this example, we'll use the D4 ADS V5. Why that option? Because it's the cheapest for this demo and it has over 127 gigs of local storage. We'll select that option and then go to disks and we'll scroll down. With V5, we get the temp disk placement option. Notice NVMe placement is grayed out because that's not an option on this SKU. Let's select temp disk placement. And now if we scroll up, that changes the OS disk options above. Let's change the OS disk type to premium SSD for the best performance. Let's go to networking and select the network settings. This option uses an existing VNet, but you can create a new one if needed. Let's go to management. One option I frequently enable is auto shutdown. That saves money in a lab environment where the VMs don't need to be running all the time. If we deallocate this VM, however, the OS disk will be reset and it will never start again. We don't deallocate VMs with ephemeral disks. We have to delete and recreate them. As mentioned previously, however, we can restart the VM from inside the OS. Let's disable that. Configure the rest as you'd like and go to review and create. Once validation passes, click Create. The process to image computers with ephemeral disks is much faster due to the higher IOPS. We'll pause the video here and come back once it's done. That didn't take much time, let's go to the resource. And if we scroll down, it shows ephemeral OS disk under disks in overview. If we go to settings, disks, and then open the OS disk, we don't get many options for modifying the ephemeral disk. Again, we'd need to recreate this VM to make any changes. Let's log into the VM and open up disk management. Here we are in disk management on the new VM. It shows we have two partitions, one for the C drive, that's about 127 gigs, the size of the image. We also have a temp storage partition, that's the other 123 gigs from that local storage. That is how we deploy a VM with an ephemeral disk from the Azure portal. Here we are in VS Code. Next, let's deploy an Azure VM with an ephemeral disk using PowerShell. This code is available at the link below. Most of this configuration is the same as deploying any VM with PowerShell. We have to connect to Azure and select the subscription. Then we can create the credentials and assign it to a variable. We'll run that. Next are some variables for the VM. This example will use an existing VNet and subnet. We're using the VM size D4 ADS V6 for this example. That has the NVMe storage. Let's select the variables and hit run to add them to memory. Next, we get the network configuration and create a virtual network interface. We'll select and run those commands. After that, we build the VM configuration. Again, most of this is the same as any other VM, except for the last option, the set AZ VM OS disk command. That sets the parameter diff disk setting to local, the caching is read only, and the diff disk placement parameter is the location of the ephemeral disk. In this example, it's the NVMe disk option because we're using the V6D series. Some comments were added for this command. The other option, if we're using temp disk, is resource disk. We'll select and run this block of commands. And finally, we can create the VM with the new AZVM command. The video will pause for a minute while it finishes. In that finish, let's use the get AZVM command to get the OS disk differencing disk settings. And that shows it's local with an NVMe disk. That is how to create an Azure VM with an ephemeral OS disk in PowerShell. And we're back, a few things to keep in mind. We can't capture an image from a VM with an ephemeral OS disk. There's no support for snapshots, disk encryption, Azure backups, and site recovery. And there's limited management in the Azure portal for the ephemeral OS disk. That's how ephemeral OS disks work and how to deploy them in Azure. If you found this helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more cloud content. Thanks for watching.